Yo, 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 it's your boy back with a brand new video today. I'm gonna to show you guys how to get a good video of Beaster here at Media Day FGCU COD. Here we go. I'm using that somewhere. I don't know how yet, but I'm using it. So how did your last three seasons go on FGCU Esports? Um, last three seasons, it didn't feel like that long ago, but it's been three years, which is pretty crazy. Um, first year, I guess being Cold War, which like didn't really count, but it, it put us on the map in a way. We played the Summer Open, we placed pretty well in it against pretty good teams. Top laundry. Word. Top laundry then, last one ring. Back ring, back ring. Let's go! Nice, baby, nice! Let's go, fucking Mitch. shit! Let's go, fucking go, shit, Mitch. guys! Let's fucking go, Mitch. You're huge, bro. Then going into Vanguard. Um, uh, Vanguard was good, too. We got over top 25 and shit, so it was fun. Um, made lots of improvements, lots of... Uh, exposure went to ICC, got third in that, I think, right? Fifth. Okay. There's a good, there's really good teams there anyway. So, um, finished the year. What did we finish? Uh, oh, really? Top 54. So I'm definitely not what we were capable of, right? Going into Modern Warfare 2. Um, the game was pretty shit, as everyone knows, right? But uh, we had a new person in the roster, good wheels, the great help, big, big help, really good guy. And um, started out good. We unfortunately placed into Division Two, but uh, with that being said, we didn't lose a map. We didn't lose series, of course. I don't think anyone got over 100 points on us in hardpoint. Um, but going into playoffs, uh, we knew it had to be done. We got 24, 16, top 24, yeah. So still definitely not the place we wanted, but it's pretty good compared to what other rosters were out there. And then. Um, going into this year, we had really big expectations, and coming into this land, we have no other expectation other than to win it. So, looking forward to this year, man. Pretty good. All right, how did your ever since you started competing for FGCU Esports? How has it been? Um, all of the above. Uh, I w I would say I would say a lot has changed in the past three years. Obviously, coming in off season Cold War. Um, you know, I'm coming off probably my best challenger season and, you know, I have a lot of stuff go on and, you know, I decided to take the route of, you know, playing for collegiate, playing for FGCU. Going into Vanguard, you know, we felt really confident, but we were still undervalued as a team. Um, we had a lot of good, uh, a lot of good reps, a lot of good matches, you know, played Very against really good people. Um, we came off really slow in stage two, though, and I think people started to look down on us once again. And, you know, it is what it is. And then I had the whole nine credit situation going into playoffs, and I obviously took a lot of the blame for the way that Vanguard ended that year. Just heading to this year, you know, you know, this is the last so shot we got, and, two you know, monster, made my mats off. with this roster, we want to make it count, for sure. So, expectation oh going God. into this land is just to win. Expectation to go into this year is just to have fun and uh, show people what's up. That's it. Wheeler, how has your last two, three seasons been on FGCU Esports? How did they go? Everything like that. All right, so I got... My freshman year was the Vanguard season, and I remember I was on uh, I was on Discord and I was looking around. I was playing Cold War. Keep in mind, I sucked 
really bad. So I, <laughs> so I was looking for some people to play with, like ranked play, you know, me and my little orange gem self. And then going into Vanguard, like I said, I checked Discord and I saw that there was an eSports uh, Discord. So I joined that. I remember I ended up joining the uh, COD Cord from that. And then I think I messaged Petty first and I asked him if there was uh, any room for me this season. He said that there was going to be a slot. And then he hit me with the infamous ghosting. He didn't talk to me for four months. So I thought that was uh, kind of chalk. But he ended up messaging me, I think it was like the end of December. And he said that there was a spot on the team, so then that's when uh, me and Crazy, aka Barry, came onto the team. So we were both on Academy. And the first year I was kind of on and off. I played like four regular season matches. So then in the Vanguard offseason, I was grinding Warzone with Kirch and Barry. And we played that whole uh, tournament the CCL had. We ended up getting fourth, so that was fun. I had something to do. Then going into MW2, I was told that I was going to be on the main team. So I started, uh, I think right off the rip, I started scrimming with the main people. Beaser, Stin, and Kirch. And it was, it was kind of cool to play with people that actually knew what was going on. Because the year before Academy, we were kind of just running around, just kill horn pretty much. It was cool to learn from those guys because they've been playing a lot longer than I have. So, and then MW2, we started off with the CGN Charlotte land and ended up getting third there. Had some good moments. Some didn't get captured on camera, unfortunately. But we, we did end up getting third. Not bad, you know. And then obviously we had the whole uh, Division I uh, qualification thing. Didn't make it, but whatever. Played Division Two. Didn't lose a map. Like uh, I think everybody's mentioned, I'm pretty sure this is the last year with the fellas. Um, I think everyone's moving on after this, so let's have uh, looking to have one more good year and just have some fun along. All right, um, Brady, Beast or Siren, how have your uh, last few seasons been at FGCU? So let's see, dating back to. Uh, MW19 is when I wanted to play collegiate. I was still a senior in high school. So I messaged the team from this COVID year. That was back in 2020. And I messaged, I think it was just in the generic Discord, uh, the FGC Esports Discord. And I want to say it was Petty. Oh, uh, Shock, I think is his name. They said they were, they were going to make a Cold War team for the next season. But they didn't know if it was 4v4 or 5v5 yet, so we were practicing 5v5. And I won't lie, they were shit. So as soon as they announced it 4v4, I backed out and I didn't play that Cold War season with them. I focused on school my freshman year. Petty messaged me right after the season ended. He was hoping to get some more people around. So I want to say the team was me, Petty, Tippin, and one more. I want to say it was Granley. And then we started outsourcing a lot. I messaged Kirch again as he was interested in it beforehand, but he kind of had a giant ego back then. Uh, that got shut down real quick. And, <laughs> um, and then we found Justin as well. Um, who else came on during Cold War? I want to say Smitty did as well. Um, Leo Poldo, he was a big help in that uh, summer open. Shout out Leo Poldo and my son. Um, and then going into Vanguard season. It was me, Tippin, Justin, Kirch. We had that ICC open. We placed fifth. It was just, it was shit because we played our first match that Sunday at like 10 a.m. We didn't play again till like 6 p.m. that night, which kind of fucking sucked. And Vanguard didn't go as well as we had hoped, knowing Mr. Nine Credits over there. And then roster changes going into playoffs. Yeah, that season did not go as planned. 
Then going into MW2, we had high hopes for it. We had a solid team around us now. And then going into this land, um, open, we win it. This will be, I want to say, all of our first land ships, except for Justin, because he likes to ego us and go play with the X18 guys. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, win this because I need to pay off my credit card bill. All right. Oh, what are these little guys? I don't know. My mom brought them when she was Packing in town. Hot cocoa. Oh, we do need to pack some babies. Hold on. Hot cocoa. What? Carrying a whole ass. Oh, hey, you want some more? Oh yeah. Here. Uh, oh my god, how many did you buy? Uh, I didn't buy any. Corey had a thousand of them. Like a thousand. This guy's got a little, little hair. <laughs> so put them in my hands. Oh. We're gonna get a text in our group chat. He's gonna be like, dude, who the fuck did it again? On the pillow. Little babies here. Little babies over here. I got a bad feeling though, this muffin's gonna wanna come out when I'm on that plane and then everyone's gonna suffer. I'm just sitting in the car like this. Just... Oh god. Oh my lord, it's my first. They'll be hyped for each other, just not um, stay in that moment for two I don't know what I'm, I'm probably not gonna use any of this shit anyways. I'm a little fanboy. Let's go on, <laughs> Friday before our flight. I mean, we're all. I kind of got them here a little early to do content. And got them here way too early because now we were just sitting around for an hour, threatening Petty to uh, take down his door and put baby little plastic babies on his bed. Yeah, heading to Friday, we had Barry drive us to the airport, which was nice because he lives right down the street and. I mean, flight was all right, nothing special. It was not too bumpy nice going up on the way back, though. That was not going to die on that shit. Um, but once we landed, shout out Steve-O, our boy, uh, picked us up from the airport, which was like an hour away. Thank God he picked us up because that would be an expensive ass Uber. And he ended up bringing us to our hotel, checked in real quick. Um, and we headed straight to the facility so we could scrim them, and scrims against them went pretty well. I don't think we dropped a map. Uh, there's a couple close ones because they love to play as close, apparently. No matter what year it is, even at the ICC LAN, played us pretty close. Nice. Yes, sir. Wheeler is shit. <laughs> All right, Sten, what the fuck's happening over here? Bro, I cannot log into my fucking thing, dude. I was in, I had, name, I had no aim assist, like I promised I had none, dude. And so I decided to close it, right? And redo it. I got a normal person one, close it, and open it back up, right? And I try to get back in, and for some reason I have too many attempts, bro. So now I cannot get back into play. Steve, what's happening over here in the Shenandoah camp? We're just gonna ask them if they want to scrim while we wait for you. Yes. Yo, Finns. Do you want to do the scram? <laughs> okay, we're, we're waiting for it. This guy needs to email me back about this group project. I think he's fucking me over. I don't like it. Welcome away from Ben. I don't have our sweater shorts today. Good morning, Stin. Morning. Feeling Jacob. Oh, we're feeling phenomenal. Yeah. It's nice and warm in here. Got like six layers on. About a slam in the buddy I blew. With my best buddy. How are you feeling, Stan? 
and welcome to the Winter Warfare Invitational here at Shenandoah University in Winchester, Virginia. So George Mason, we first played them on Saturday. Like we had expectations going to land. Obviously, we're the best team there. I still believe we are. Um, but when we played them initially, we skimmed them online. It wasn't close whatsoever. Um, so going to the first hard point, we knew we had the upper hand, of course, right? So we played them on good row, I believe. And we 100-point clubbed them. And very big point here. For every single match that we played on Saturday, the PC that I was sitting on, I promise you that I have aim assist. So I was almost useless, right? Anyway, so we played them, so, uh, absolutely wiped the floor with them in hard point. We got into search. We didn't really play search a whole bunch um, leading up to the event because we played it so much beforehand um, when HP like wasn't really viable, I guess. So <clears throat> going into the search, we kind of thought, you know, it could be a little dicey, right? And it was. We got up to famous FGCU 5-2 lead, I think. And then we started... Uh, Start throwing it out the window like we always do. Um, but we do close it out 6 4. It might have been round 11. It, might, was it? it was round 11, so 6 5, unfortunately, right? Kirch finds the kill. Cami finds the trade, but traded it's out again as well. Wheel back to the back. It's one for one for one for oh, one no. for one. Oh no. And they find enough. It's a 1v1 as Kirch facing off against Percepts. And now we look to see in the hotel. Who will be able to take this fight. Percepts has been eight. Rolling force so far. She doesn't see him. Kirch, fight, but Kirch, Kirch swings down, finds the kill. Kirch in after the one storming one. through, storming through hard point. Kirch able to hold an eleven. I mean, after that, we have two and two hard points, and they're not going to be us in the hard point. So, so we played them on Karachi. We played Jimmy on Karachi, and it was almost to the point where we had such a gigantic lead. We stopped trying. We left the grass, right? And I mean, we were up like a ridiculous amount. One something to like five or something crazy like that. So we slapped the gas, right? They started coming back. You know, chain hills, P3, P4, and P5. And so, um, going to last few tape and fast last few rotations, it was 220, 220, or something around there. And we were just like, all right, guys, locked in, whatever. So, going to the P5, they didn't get a second on it. We closed it out 3 0. Um, they did surprise me, though. I did not think that they're going to be. Based off scrimming, like online, I had the intention going into the match that they wouldn't really give us a tough matchup, I guess. But they put me wrong. You know, they were good at search. Um, and the HP, they showed life, too. So, But that GMU match, it was a good little warm-up, I guess, for the event. But said, you and I are going to be enjoying the company of Wright State and FGCU. We just saw FGCU uh, handle George Mason quite quickly. I believe that was a, a swift 3-0 here. Uh, FGCU, though, again, number seven having to play lightweight. Picks one far in the series. This is going to be a battle run. Yeah, we see a huge kill by Germ there on the side of FGCU. Just like that, three down. They still have a close spot. Are unable to connect that frag. He's going to slide in. Potentially get one. Get two. Can he get the third? Nice! On the fucking steps! Game. It's just so this is more attrition. FGCU is winning that that trophy up, and now we see a really bad set of spawns coming pretty far out, and they're only going to be able to attack from this one angle. You can see all the FGCU Ooh. players rotating over from top now, and they just they're unable to get through that show. All right, now talk to me about right state. <sighs> yeah, German them, German, German, German. He, he was really good. Germ, Germ was really, really good. He was probably the only thing I remember about Wright State. First hard point, I don't even remember what map we played. Pretty sure we just, I, I think it was close. It was like 250, 180 probably, something like that. Um, I don't remember anything specific about it. Was that the map I dropped 42 on subbase? Yeah, that, that map I remember. I remember screaming after that. Um, I, I, that map was fantastic from us, and then we rolled right into a skid row search, which will never happen again, by the way. We lost 6-1 somehow. Uh, Jerem had a fantastic game, you know, just not enough reps on that map with us four. 
Um, it is what it is. We went on, won the next two respawns. You know, I think they were both like 250, 180. The skid row was closer ish, I think. Um, but, you know, just a good composure from us once again, you know, really showing our respawn prowess. But, um, but we knew that like SD was going to be our weak spot this tournament because, you know, we had played wagers in the past, you know, separated from all four of us. But, you know, we really had no concrete like strats or really knew what we were doing together on the map in search. And, you know, that series kind of was like our first step to like, OK, we need to fix whatever we're doing in search and get it going for Sunday. Talk to me about Georgia Mason again on Sunday. I, I just want to I just want to touch on Georgia Southern real quick. Oh, I can put, yeah. Let, let, let me touch on Georgia Southern real quick. How scared do you have to be to show up to a land, not play for first seed at a land where instead of playing Army, you would be playing George Mason, and Army ended up winning the whole thing. So you kind of shot yourselves in the foot. I think if you show up to a LAN event and you come to play matches on LAN, you do not forfeit ever. Unless you are like in pool play and you have no guaranteed chance of making Saturday or Sunday. I, I just think it was, you know, a really soft move from them, if I'm being honest. And I think we were all ready to go, you know, ready to slam them. But, you know, Modern War ever since Modern Warfare 2, they forfeited like four or five times against us. So I just don't think they're the biggest fans of us. And, you know, good luck to them this season. They're going to need it. What's going on? Vlog, documentary, whatever we're calling it. As you can see down there, we're, we're, trying we're, to, we're trying to find the Zaxby's right now because this hotel only has a golden fucking crown next to it, and I'm not going to a golden crown with a chocolate fountain for the local fucking Sanchez family dipped all their kids' feet into it. That's probably not going to make it into the vlog, but it's all right. Hey, it might. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Bells could have made it by now if you would have just bet us. I'm going to do that. Let me see the fat boy. You're going on the documentary. Have fun. Uh, <laughs> all right, bye, Jay Bells. Bye, Davey. Thanks for your time. Hey, man. Yo, don't listen to him. He's like, Shout out, Bells. Oh, my God, bro. Like, you're just so weird, bro. We made it to Zaxby's. If the camera would turn that way. I got you. I already did, but I'll do it again. Get it back on. What are you doing? Oh, fuck. I was zooming into the next piece. We lost Stin a couple times in the process. <laughs> kept checking his phone. He's like a four-year-old. We got him to Zaxby's. It's all what he's always wanted. So now we're going to eat some food. Bezos is going to give us a ride back on the Uber card. And then we're going to go to bed. Thank God. Um... And welcome back to the Winter Warfare Invitational here at Shenandoah University in Winchester, Virginia. Nice. Oh, fuck yeah! Was it the controller? Um, Sunday, I believe we were the. F no, we were the second match, but we did. We got there kind of late. We got a late check-in, and we played GMU again. And I believe it was a 3-0, right? Yeah. Um, that felt pretty easy. I, I felt that that series. I felt good. I mean, GMU, they're they're all right, but they obviously weren't the best team. So you know, it's hard to tell if you're locked in or not because you're kind of just destroying them. Playing Army for the first time, Winners Finals, right? They're on the other side of the bracket. We never got to, a chance to play them or see anything. All we got to see was how they looked against Shenandoah or, you know, I mean, that was the best, other best team on the other side of the, um, in the other pool, right? 
we knew we had to, you know, bring it all, right? Because these guys were obviously talented, of course. So going to the first map, it was a sub base hard point. And uh, we beat them. I want to say it's like 250, 200 around there. I want to say. I could be wrong. We played, them, we played sub base like eight times with these guys. So, so map two, 6 3, high rise, whatever, right? And the search. We were fine with losing searches because we knew that we could. When basically every HP, but going into the third map, which I'm pretty sure was Invasion, right? So we played Invasion, and Invasion was one of our stronger maps, right? It was heavy, you have to rotate heavy, right? Played very fundamental Call of Duty. There wasn't, there's not a whole bunch of whack spawns like Terminal, for instance, some shit. Um, so we were very, very, very confident. I'm pretty sure that was our pick as well. So we picked that, beat them. I want to say they almost 100 point club them. It was very close, 250, one something, very low hundreds. Crossfire could be deadly, but Reacts able to find one. Wheels goes down, but Beaster Army is able to go positive when you have Kirch, Wheels, Beaster, and Justin on a team together. Now defending the point, Nephi was able to get some time, but the cruise missile able to find two. Kirch oh, able to find another one. Missile. Justin with a back to back <laughs> cruise missile. Good. Yeah, a beautiful job from FGCU on this rotation. They need just 20 points. Beaser with the double. Bad boy Beaser holding it down as it looks like Jukes and company trying to push in, but bringing out the pistol. Little spicy on that one there with his teammates coming. I don't think he's going to be able to break through in time. Beaser with another double kill. going to be it. FGCU locking in the W. And you can hear they're pretty excited about that one. A beautiful, beautiful. So going to the map number four, which is Skid Row. We obviously had the same mindset right there. We're going to show on them, of course. Another hard point, our strong suit. Um, so going to that Skid Row, very, very confident. And it was neck and neck literally the whole entire way. And we get to that last P5 uh, where all the crates are. And it was like... 240, 245, wheels is right up against the fence, waiting for us to come out, spawn in tunnel. And we're trying to cross to get to the hard point. Um, I mean, they just have crossfires on us, so we're never going to cross, right? So that was our first hard point we lost, and we were like, I knew that these guys, obviously, we're going to see them again in Grand Finals. So I was like, all right, so these guys, those are pretty good. So we go into that, another, that last map five for Winners Finals. We played them on Invasion. So we were playing, it was even even. Josh had a big 1v3 uh, that gave us a tons of momentum. And I want to say that was like round, around, around two, right? So right at the beginning, big 1v3, lots of momentum going into it, right? Neck and neck, right? We start to pull away. We end up winning, what was it, 6-3? We end up winning 6-3, very, but very, very close. Could have gotten anyway, to be honest. It's Reacts Beaster. able to swing around with Beaster, able to bring him down. Beaster looking for oh, another, and he Beaster. finds it. Beaster, Bad boy, We knew we would be seeing these guys again in Grand Finals. Um, but we had a really, really, really long break. Not a really long break, like two-hour break before we got the chance to play them, or whoever it was, in the Grand Finals. Ladies and gentlemen, we have finally arrived at your grand finals for the Winter Warfare Invitational. Ready to bring you a bit of a rematch here from the winner's finals between Army and FGCU. And then Army for grand fucking finals. I mean, don't get me wrong. They were some fucking shooters. They were shooting on all cylinders. Especially in that first grand finals match when we got 3 0 swept. Kill on Jukes, but Reacts quickly finds response. And another one. Beaster goes down to four wheels, brings down the Reacts in return. Jukes able to find a kill on Justin. Nephi finds one on wheels. There it is. And Army closes it out. A 3 0 victory. In the first series. But luckily, we had the bracket reset um, to rely on. I feel like the vetoes for the bracket reset felt a lot better for us. Um, but once again, we came out super flat in that first respawn. Karachi hardpoint was, I think we got slammed. We got slammed like 250 to 120. Comms were super flat. I think everything was super, super deflated is the word I would use heading into that second map. Um, it was another terminal search. You know, we, we stepped up when it mattered. We were able to win that map, I think, 6-4 the Thunderbirds, and right now, Jukes looking for this chance to cover his teammate. 
get the bomb planted. Justin Neppy looking and waiting for him to swing around that corner. Oh. Not the right angle though. Justin able to find one. Neppy caught looking the wrong way. Justin finds a good fight. Able to find some oh, damage. Not quite Justin. a kill. He cleans up a second. And Jukes goes down. Woo. Justin able to clean up the round. As Reacts finds him through the wheel well. Jukes going down to a nice headshot from Beaser, and it's a 2v2 situation, Virgil. Beautiful shot from Beaser as well. The no wheels behind in the shot landed, but he finds Whoa. the kill anyways. Wheels falls down. Reacts going for the fuse. Sees if he has time. Beaser pushing quickly, and he's going to be able to find it? the kill. Oh. Shut it down. Florida Gulf Coast. <laughs> Might have discovered it. Now rotating in. Wheels and company able to stay up, but Reacts gets one. Wheels able to take him out. And shots coming from back of plane. We got number seven wheels going in for the plant, and Merc left all alone as Beaser takes out Jukes, and Merc all alone in a 1v3. We've seen it done before, but read like a book. Merc gets taken out, and FGCU taking the W. So going to that map three, which is their pick again, map three hardpoint on Skid Row. Um, also was close. It was neck and neck, I want to say, up until the last few hills, and then we chained them. And it was like 250, 190-ish, I want to say. Company are able to get on point. Neppy on there, actually. Excuse me, Justin clearing it off. And a beautiful play from Justin on the seventh streak. Dumpster has the high ground. Jukes and company going to be rotating up together. But there's the one and the two. And what a play from Kirch. Beautiful little two-piece. And Kirch, the killer, is back, ladies and gentlemen. Opportunities going to find a kill. Beast are able to find one. Sprays the pistol. Oh, finds Beaser. two. Merc Bad and reacts. Doesn't stand a chance with Beaser in town. It's team Florida Gulf Coast at 183 for Army. This could go oh, either Justin. way. In 30 points, but Justin sets up the opportunity. Wheels <laughs> finds another one with a nade, but Justin finally brought down by Jukes. But Florida Gulf Coast already positioned on that point. Beaser, Kirch. They get there. They cannot. Wheels shuts it down, and that's going to be the W for F. GCU, you hear them chirping in the background. They are excited. They are stoked. They are leading right now. Justin Clappin, hopefully that's for me and his teammates. Uh, the map four was sub base. The sub base is like really all about Gunny. It's kind of just, I mean, you can rotate on like E4, I guess. But every other hill is just scrappy. You just got to hope you can get a four wide. P2, you can hold it. But we, it was tight the whole time, and then towards the end, uh, we went to like the third P1, and we were, for some reason, really good at holding that hill. I just get down, and everyone slays over me. I, we got like 30 seconds off it, so it was like, we got to like 195, and they were at like 160. So then going into P2, there was like 20 seconds or something left on the game clock, so I was like, oh, we, we were kind of all talking in common, like we just need to keep it white or get on the hill and like someone needs to play underneath the p2 steps just really keep it white as long as possible because even if it goes to the p3 you can keep p3 pretty white too if you just go top third but they held the p2 pretty well i think we just kept kind of going at it one at a time just hoping that somebody would get a three piece or something crazy pretty sure they got like 45 seconds off the p2 which got them to 201 and then there was like two seconds left on the game clock and we were down three and we just couldn't get to the new hill. I think we actually, we might have got the kills to get to the point, we just couldn't make it there. Which is really unfortunate. Kirch on the head glitch, cannot secure the kill. Justin takes out Merc. Jukes taking down Beaser, but it's Justin for a massive Duke piece on that head glitch. And Justin absolutely frying on this B3. For Reacts closing in on that cruise missile, but as he finally goes down, Justin finds the kill, shuts it down, doesn't want a cruise missile to deal with later. Florida Gulf Coast grabbing the points that they can. It looks like they'll be just short of tying it up here at the end of this hard point. Nine seconds remaining. The teams have got to get on the hard point if they want any kind of opportunity. And Army is doing exactly what we saw before. They're up mm -hmm. just barely enough, and they're denying the contesting of the oh, point, and they no do! Way. Army! And let's get ready for this S&D matchup of your grand finals for the Winter Warfare Invitational. Here we go. Trade. And now a 2v3, FGCU might be in trouble here, but Beaser evening up the odds. It's a 2v2, Jukes and Merc now feeling the pressure and a beautiful turn and burn from Beaser, baby. Justin and Beaser trying to stay up. Merc looking for the finish, but Beaser can't be stopped. He's an absolute beast. One here, really need to be able to find the kill. They run He's right over him. He's they don't know. Oh, and they no. turn back the double back. Gives Army the round. We're headed to around 11. Oh my God. The grand finals.
last map. Oh, it's oh my map God. five. Wrap <laughs> point. Match point. You could Tournament not ask point. for a further <laughs> match in this. Marbles, ladies and gentlemen, reacts holding on Alpha as FGCU holds and not making any huge advancements on position. Merck set up on this nasty head glitch and FGCU making a long rotation to Alpha. Merck catching them on it and seeing all these players rotate has got to call this out. Half of Army is over on B still and FGCU is making a phenomenal push over to Alpha and might just be able to rotate in. Wheels the bomb carrier coming in and trying to find a way to get to Alpha. No one going down yet. A slow, methodical round. Jukes in mid. Seeing a push. Neppy with the first headshot on Beaster. There's the first blood. Reacts for another. Taking out Wheels. Kurtz taking out Merck. It's a 2v3. Pressure all on Army now to keep them off this point. Eight seconds. Kurtz gets another. Reacts holding. Reacts holding. Reacts going down. It's Justin for the kill. It's a 1v1. Neppy holding. Trying to rotate there. They don't have enough time to plan. And there it is. Your winners of the Winter Warfare!